Hey, what's up, guys? This is Taya Valkyrie from Impact and Lucha Underground, and you are watching Ambi. Hey, everyone. It's Alicia, and I am so excited to be here with Lucha Royalty, Taya Hi. Valkyrie. Hi. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? <laughs> I love that you're, like, up here. <laughs> Very up here. <laughs> you doing well? Yeah. Fantastic. Good. Here at uh, Rise in Chicago. Yes. Just finished a great match versus Mercedes Martinez for the say. first time facing her. So it was really great. Do you love first time matches where it's like you have to kind of learn your opponent and figure things out as you go? I do because I really thrive on like having ma different types of matches and having different opponents all the time. I think that's what keeps it interesting for the fans. And okay. I would am honored to have got to share the ring with someone like her who's obviously like a veteran Absolutely. of many years. And, you know, who's who for me, I'm always trying to learn from different people and stuff. So I was really excited to face her today. Well, something very neat as well is the fact that last night on Impact Wrestling, we saw the Demons Dance, which was extremely... I don't like Demons Dance. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get to that in a second because this rivalry between you and Rosemary, I, I don't know. It was supposed to settle last night, but I don't know. If I don't it's know if done. it's settled at all at yeah. this point. Like, we murdered ourselves. It was, you, really you did. know. I feel like she has been such an amazing rivalry for me, especially just coming into Impact. Um, so I, I don't want it to end. I want to see how far we can push each other and what other magic we can create for the fans and, you know, and see what happens in the next year. And she did come out victorious last night, so mm -hmm. I'm assuming that also is one of the reasons you would absolutely love another rematch. Yes, I would like my revenge, and revenge can be very sweet, mm -hmm. even if it's you know, a one-way ticket to Valhalla, so we'll have Ooh. to see what happens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I introduced you as Lucha Royalty, and mm -hmm. a great thing has happened recently, and that is the fact that you have taped the brand new season of Lucha Underground, season four. Yes, and season And you said four. how your character has really grown and developed within the season. I know mm -hmm. you can't share too much, but what can you yeah, share about that? There can't be any spoilers. Of That's course. rule number one of Lucha Underground, but <laughs> I feel like in season four, I... I Taya's character really changed and you're going to see a completely different side of her that you're not going to expect either. Like people are going to be like, what okay. happened? But they don't realize that like season three was filmed so long ago. So there's been like a whole evolution in people's personal lives and in their careers during this time. And it's not only for my character. I believe that every single character on Lucha really changed and got better and more intense. Awesome. And, you know, if you thought that we did some crazy stuff in seasons one through three, you have no idea what we're about to show you in season oh, four. Wow. And I don't I can't remember the exact date, but it does. it's starting to air in June on El Rey Network on Wednesday nights. So tune in for that. And how did you enjoy the new Icy Temple? Because they really just switched things up a bit this year. It was awesome. It was a much bigger space. It was still downtown Los Angeles, so it still had that nitty-gritty, um, really ghetto kind of grunge feel to it which was really great but it, it's always nice to have a little change mm -hmm. and it gave everybody different platforms to jump off of and, and different <laughs> things like that and different places to hide so it was it was really cool okay i love that because you never know where people are going to jump off of when you oh, watch yeah. lucha underground even us so. backstage we're like what oh no Ugh. are they like, doing that <laughs> <laughs> but it was really fun because we'd all just tested our creativity and allowed us to like view Push things yourselves. differently yeah exactly well, last weekend you were in NOLA for WrestleMania weekend, mm -hmm. and you said that you weren't really digging the voodoo magic over there. So what was it about that that kind of, did it freak you out those a little bit? Those girls, those girls. What was it? <laughs> Listen, I know what they were up to on that Twitch feed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> But it was very fun. No, I really yeah. enjoyed New Orleans. I think it has a very mysterious and magical kind of history and things like that. I wish I could have spent more time, um, you know, to explore it a little bit more. And hopefully I get to go back soon. It actually reminded me a lot of the certain streets and the way they were of Mexico City. Because it's that like old kind of feel and everything. And the okay. cobblestone roads and things like that. So it was really neat for me to be there. So I'm excited about hopefully going back soon. And do you believe in the supernatural and ghosts? Or yes. I do. I do. So how can you really think? You how out. can you actually believe that it's just over after this? Okay. I like believing that this is just one one chapter in our eternity of life. So you never know what's next. And if it means ghosts in New Orleans, then it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and apparently you really love all things scary. Like you're really into horror films as well. Yes. Oh, you've done your research. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I am obsessed with horror films ever since I was a little girl. Actually, John and I argue about it because I want to watch. I made him watch it, and he was so mad. Like he doesn't like it. <laughs> So he's not a he big is fan. not a horror movie fan. Oh my so gosh. he's just like, what is wrong with you? So like anytime I have a second to like watch things by myself, they always say that I'm like 
like got all the creepy stuff on, like all the true crime, all that kind of the horror movies. Stuff. Yes, I watch all of that. But um, yeah, I'm just like I think I've just been obsessed with it since I was like a little kid. And so. it didn't freak you out when you were younger. No, either? I thought it was hilarious. Like okay. I was like, I don't know, is that weird? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's dying. It's oh my god, it's so, so funny. funny. But I also really enjoyed like those corny old like the 80s classics. and cla- you know those 80s horror movies that are so bad that they're so good mm-hmm. you know um, and I think that I've just always kind of those weird cult classic type of things I've always enjoyed so well, to you what is the ultimate horror film like what's one that you have seen multiple times and you just don't think you're gonna tire of Oh, God, really? There's so many. I mean, The Exorcist, I remember when I first saw that, and I remember going home to my mom. I saw it at a birthday party when I was 12, and I went home to my mom and was mortified, but then, like, I watched it, like, 20 more times. (laughs) And she was horrified that oh I'd seen gosh. it. Like, she will still to this day talk about that. Really? I mean, I think that The Exorcist is like a classic horror movie. Yeah, but it's freaky, especially when you're younger. Yeah, and then like, there's, you know, the Freddy Kruegers and the Michael Myers and, like, you know, yeah. all the craziness like that. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, a little while back, you posted this older photograph of yourself and you captioned it What the hell is going on here? You used that hashtag. So, I love how you sometimes have to look back to see how far you have Which come. one was that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I post a lot of really funny, like, old stuff just because it's really like hilarious you're okay. posting a lot of really cool old ones oh my gosh now I have to check <laughs> I have no idea this is from a couple weeks back but I think you probably have posted some since oh what was I doing <laughs> what sort of weird behavior I follow you on Instagram so I've seen like a bunch of them now but it was an older one of you in a different like different gimmick it was completely before lucha royalty oh my I can only imagine thinking. yeah there's some pretty there's some pretty craziness going on <laughs> When you look was back, it this one? Yes. No. Was it? I think that That's was That's a throwback it. Thursday. That was baby Taya, baby wear a loca. Before she, <laughs> there's a lot of that. No, I just like I've always thrived on like changing my character up and growing and evolving. Like if you look at someone that's been in wrestling for, you know, for a very long time, like a Chris Jericho, I feel like he has evolved his character and he's always the same person, but yeah. he tries to change his look and the way he moves or like different things he does. And I think that that's what keeps you relevant. And like, I try to adapt things that I enjoy in my real life through into my character or like moments in my life. Like the Lucha royalty thing came from me being the first ever um, non-Mexican woman to win the Reina de Reinas championship in Mexico, which means queen of Queens. So that was like a really, really big thing for me and, and women's wrestling in general in Mexico and in Lucha Libre. And then I was a two time and a longest reigning. So that's where that come from. So that influenced that diversion of yeah. Taya. And then like what you're going to see in season four has influences of what's been going on in my life lately. So okay. yeah. I'm trying it's to put the pieces of the puzzle. It's very mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> when you do look back at older gimmicks or phases you went through, even when you were growing up, is there anything that you look back and you're kind of like, why did I wear that or why did I do that? Oh my that? God, my first set of wrestling gear, which was brown. Like, Okay, what was it? Like, I had I was doing the Viking thing. Like I was gonna. That's oh, like, like I've football. always okay. been Taya Valkyrie. Yeah. Like since the beginning of time when I started wrestling. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I like really went for like the Viking thing, and I did these like weird braids, and I had this brown outfit with like gold on it. It was, it was horrible, and these brown <laughs> fur boots and this like brown cape thing. I'm not really too sure what exactly cape? it was. Okay, it was like a short cape. There's video and pictures, trust me. There's a lot of it. And I had, like, this really weird hair. I don't know. It was really bad. But, I mean, you have to start somewhere, I I guess, right? (laughs) So, whatever. We've moved on. Thank (laughs) God. (laughs) Well, I absolutely love, as I mentioned, I follow you on Instagram. And one of my favorite things seeing on there is the fact, this is going to sound a little weird, but on, like, hump day, you really embrace your body and your booty. And you're all about, like, using those hashtags to express that. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who grew up especially very self-conscious, like, I absolutely love seeing someone like you putting yourself out there and being like, this is me, take it or leave it. Yeah, it's just, like, I think... I've gone through a lot of changes in my personal life in the last few years and I suffered from depression and and eating disorder for a long time when I lived in Mexico and a lot of people like to bring it up. They're like, oh, she looked really skinny at this point and why does she look different now? And they'll attack me for that because they just don't understand. You know, people go through things and, and other people don't understand why that is or what's going on. And I had to realize really struggle with that, just like every other woman or human being. I think even men go through that. Um, You know, so I think that it's important for me to just like, I am the happiest I've ever been in my life, like career wise, personal life wise, physically, like I feel more beautiful than I ever have. And I'm really happy with the way I look. So I like to almost throw it in people's faces a little bit because (laughs) it's like, 
you know, I guess you don't like I it, but I really do. So, and guess what? My fiance loves it too. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's like, I'm a woman and you know, we're all going to change and develop in our lives. You know, experiences we have, you know, affect the way we look or affect our emotions and things like that. So, you know, this is me happy training really hard and, um, you know, being successful and living my life. I absolutely love hearing that. Like, you yeah. have no idea how, how great it is to hear that from someone. Well, thank else. you. Of course. <laughs> we have to be positive. The world's full of negativity, oh you know? Absolutely. Come on. <laughs> Well, you mentioned there your fiance, mm -hmm. Johnny Impact, and you have wedding fever like I have never seen before. I know, I can't help it. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, don't apologize <laughs> for it. It's a great thing because apparently putting a whole wedding together is a lot more difficult than you anticipated. Oh my God. It is so much work. And yeah. ladies out there, the ladies always end up doing like a lot more than the guys do. Okay. <laughs> Just going to throw it out there. No, but he has totally helped me with a lot of, like, all the big decisions. But I think I also have give, bring it, brought it on myself because I'm very controlly about, like. So it's like, you, uh, even uh, if you took things over, like, yeah. you would want your hand. And like, he would try over. to, like, put the bow on the invitation. I'm like, no, stop. I got to do it. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's just, like, because I just, I really want it to be so perfect for that day and our lives coming together and our friends and our family. And, like, I'm marrying my best friend. So. I just want it to be the perfect day, as perfect as possible. I know it sounds so corny, and I'm, like, not really a corny I think that's person. What every but every girl wants, though. I mean. Yeah. You know, I'm going to become the um, – what am I – what did I put the name says? Mrs. Nitro Morrison Mundo Impact Hennigan. <laughs> put that on a credit card. That's going to the title. <laughs> or a passport. Like, what are you supposed to do with that? Right. <laughs> but, no, it's going to be a really great day, and it's only, a few, you know, a few weeks away. So. Yeah. Isn't I'm that excited. a little insane to think about something you've been planning for for such a long right? time? Right? You invest all this time and money and emotions, it's right and it's, like, happening. Like, and there's nothing I can do. It's happening. <laughs> and I'm, like, ex super, like, nervous, but, like, excited about it. Such a big step, right? But um, it's time, and I'm excited. Well, we, Yay! Yeah, it's <laughs> happening. It's happening. <laughs> but we know you two for the amazing in-ring performances. But when you aren't in the ring, how is that rare downtime spent together? Oh my gosh, we just like being at home with our puppy Presley, who has Instagram. Follow him on Instagram <laughs> at the Prince Presley. Thank you. Um, we just love being at home and being together and like training and supporting each other and working on different projects together and you know, going for sushi and doing like very normal <coughs> things. We're both actual quite homebodies considering we travel, travel so, so much. much. And I think that that's probably why, because we just like to be at home with each other. So yeah, it's not that exciting, but it's, <laughs> I love it. So yeah. It's those little moments that yeah, make things exactly. great. Well, here on the website, we not only interview wrestlers, but also musicians. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could hang out with any band or artist for a day, which would you absolutely love to chill with? Oh my gosh. People are going to like criticize me because we're going to think that I want to pick like some classic artist or something, but I'm so not that person. <laughs> I think I'd like want to hang out with Rihanna okay. or Lady Gaga because I just think that they're like such creative women and I would love to pick their brains about the way they, you know, their creative process. Okay. So, yeah. So you'd almost take the whole day as like almost a, a set learning curve? A, a learning curve. Like, thing. come on, look at them. They're like successful badass women in our world that's you know so that's cool i want to learn from those people okay do you find that a lot of the stuff you listen to is pop like those artists yeah i like a lot of pop music i like stuff that makes me feel good i like a lot of rap like uh, right now i've been listening to the new cardi b album i've been i love drake his fellow canadian you know stuff like that so yeah, <laughs> yeah. well just to wrap things up i do want to leave it with the fans so mm -hmm. is there anything you want to say to all of those viewings you have such a cool fan base um just thank you everybody for supporting me over the last few years especially in the last you know, the last year and a half has been crazy with the new evolution of Lucha Underground and me now being on Impact and supporting me in my personal life and all my projects. So thank you very much. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Ty Valkyrie and the official Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ty Valkyrie. And check me out on Impact and Lucha Underground season four. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining me no today. No problem. Thank I am you. so excited we are finally I able know, to right? do this. Ah. <laughs> And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. We'll see you next time.